Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a swinging sign in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you wanna give Skillshare a try, the first 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, giving you instant access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so I've already got my sign model in the scene here and you can grab this from the project file below or you can make your own. It's just a couple of simple cubes and some text, so nothing too fancy. And I've just put all of that inside a connect object so we can treat all of the pieces as a single mesh. So let's start by making the sign dynamic. Let's right click on this and down under simulation tags, we'll add a rigid body tag. So now gravity should be applied to our sign. So if we hit play, it falls straight down. So that's a good start. Let's rewind that. And if it doesn't update, we can just go forward to frame one. Okay, so let's make sure we've got our dynamics set up the way we want. Let's take a look under the collision tab. I don't want the dynamics to affect each individual part of the model, but treat it as a single object. So we better set this to none just to be safe. And the same goes for the individual elements here. All right, so now we can create some ropes to attach to the top of our sign. So we'll need a couple of splines. And the easiest way to create a straight spline in Cinema 4D, I find, is actually with a helix. If we grab one of those and zoom out a tad so we can see it, we can straighten this out by reducing the start radius and the end radius to zero. And that's given us a nice straight spline but we want our rope to be hanging vertically. So let's just rotate this upward. And what's cool about using a flattened out helix is that if we want to shorten the length of this, we can easily do that back in here under the height setting. So let's just make this about 40 centimeters long. Then because the spline is going to bend and deform, we also want to subdivide it evenly. So let's get rid of the intermediate points and we can reduce the subdivisions down to 12 maybe. Okay, so now we can turn our helix into a regular old spline by hitting C on the keyboard to make it editable. And finally, to make sure it deforms nice and smoothly, let's change the type to linear. And to keep the points evenly spaced apart, let's make intermediate points uniform. So now we just need to move this into position. So probably easiest to do over in the top view, we'll need this right in the middle of this part here. So we'll grab that. And about there looks good. Let's just make that an even two centimeters. Then we can hold control and drag out a duplicate of that. And while we're at it, let's just name these so we don't get confused. One and two will do. Then I'll move that duplicate over into place here. And because this is symmetrical, I know that inverting negative 18 to 18 centimeters, will put that exactly into place. Then let's have a quick look in our side view. We don't want these to end all the way down here. So let's make sure that we select both splines and just move them up to where they should attach to the sign. And I want this pretty close to the edge. About there should do. Okay, let's go back to the perspective view. And now we can set up the spline dynamics. So let's right click on one of our splines. And this time we want the hair tags instead where we can find the spline dynamics tag. And I want one of these on both splines. So let's duplicate that as well. The first thing we wanna do is in here, down in the properties tab, we need to fix the endpoint into position. So the spline has a point to hang from. So let's switch to point mode over here and zoom out a tad. Then we'll just select that top point where we need the sign to hang from. Then back here, we can fix that into place by hitting set. And if we switch back to object mode, you can see that that point has now turned pink, indicating that it's been locked into place. So we just need to go ahead and do the same thing to the other spline. So back in point mode, 
We'll grab the top of that spline and in its spline dynamics tag, let's set that into place as well. Okay, back to object mode. And those points are both pink now. So let's test if they've been locked into place. And there was a little bit of bounce in there, but our splines did stay in place. So we're getting there. Let's rewind again. And let's just tweak those dynamic settings before we attach the ropes to the sign. If we grab both of these tags, we can edit them at the same time. So let's start with the drag. A little bit more air resistance might be good. So let's make that 3%. And we'll take these up to 100%. And I think that should probably do it. So now we can add some dynamic constraints to attach our ropes to the sign. So with this one selected, let's right click again and back under hair tags, let's use a hair constraint. And that's going to ask us which object we want to constrain the spline to. In our case, we want the sign, so we can grab the connected sign object and drag that into the object slot. And we don't want the whole spline to be connected to the sign, just the point at the end here where it would attach. So let's just hide the sign for a second so we can get at that point. And we'll also need to be in point mode. Then we'll grab that point at the bottom. And with that selected, we can go back to the hair constraint. And we just need to set that as the constrained point. And now we get this yellow line going from the top of the spline down toward the center of our sign, which is hidden at the moment. But before we make it visible again, let's do the same for our other rope. And the easiest way is to just copy that tag onto this spline as well. And just frame these up a tad. Then inside here, we just need to swap endpoints. So let's release that constraint and clear it as well. Then we can grab the points at the end of our second rope and set that as our new constrained point. Okay, so now the end of both ropes are attached to our sign. So we can switch back to object mode and make our sign visible again. And we'll give this a play and see what we've got so far. And it looks like those points are definitely attached, but the splines are a bit too stretchy when gravity pulls everything down. So we need to make them keep their length a bit better. And we should also make them a bit springier. And we can do exactly that up here in the simulate menu where we can find the spring constraint. So let's take a look at what we get in here in the object tab. We need an object A and an object B. So A is going to be our spline. Let's do this one first. So that goes in here and that attaches to object B, which is going to be our sign. So the connect object into here. And we've got a visual representation of the spring in here, but it's not connected quite the way we want. The endpoint of this rope is attached to the center or the center of mass of our sign. But we actually want the spring effect to take place between the top of our rope and the bottom. So if we take a look under attachment A, we can change this to polygon point, which now gives us this index value where we can cycle through all the points in our object. And you can see that's jumping from one point to the next. So I think negative one is the index of that top point. Then with attachment B, we don't want points for this one. So let's try offset instead. And this will allow us to manually reposition the end of that spring by offsetting the values down here. So negative 18 should match the position of that spline in the X axis. Then we just need to move it up in the Y axis as well. And this should be about 21 centimeters, I think. So that's spline one sorted and we could rename this and duplicate it for the other rope. So we'll just need to swap this out with spline number two and just reverse that offset to 18. And now we've got both of our springs set up. So we might as well just frame this up and give it a play. And the springs are stopping it from going too far, but we are still getting a bit of stretching in those ropes. So let's grab the springs again and we'll need to come down here and adjust the rest length, which is the maximum length our rope is able to stretch to. Our original helix was 40 centimeters long. So if we make this 41 centimeters, it'll be able to stretch to a maximum of one centimeter longer. So it's not so rigid. Let's also increase the stiffness so it behaves a bit more like rope and less like elastic. And maybe a little extra damping as well, so it loses energy a bit quicker. Then we'll hit set rest length and we'll give that a play. Okay, so it's not stretching so far now, but it is behaving a little bit weird. It's wiggling around a bit rather than settling naturally. 
So there's a few last tweaks we can make to the dynamics to fix that. So let's grab the rigid body dynamics tag on our sign and over in the force tab, we can increase the linear and angular damping, which should reduce that wiggling around. Let's have a look. And that's a little bit better. Let's also make sure we don't get any weird stuff going on with our splines. So I'll grab both of those and under the advanced tab, let's increase the steps and iterations. And we'll try that. And I think we're just about there for the dynamics. So let's now give our rope some thickness and we'll be ready to make our sign swing. And we'll just do a sweep on those splines. So let's start with the sweep shape where we'll use a circle and just bring the radius down to a good width for our rope, maybe one centimeter. Then with that selected, we'll hold Alt on the keyboard and apply a sweep. And that's come in as a parent of the circle. So we'll move this down here and just put our first spline into this hierarchy. And now that circle is sweeping along the spline to give our rope some thickness. And I reckon we could probably make the circle a little bit smaller so that rope isn't quite as thick. And again, we just need to do that for the other spline. So let's duplicate this sweep setup and rename these as well. Then we'll get rid of that duplicated spline and switch it out with our second spline. Okay, so now that we've got both ropes sorted out, all that remains is to make this swing into shot. So let's do some very basic rigging and bring in a null object. And we're going to put our whole setup into there. But before we do, I wanna move the null up here so we can rotate everything from that pivot point. So we'll just hop back into our side view to reposition this. And this doesn't have to be super precise, just roughly at the end of our ropes. About there should be fine. And now we can put all of these inside that null. Then back in our perspective view, we can now use this to rotate our sign and have it swing into the scene. So we'll hit R to switch to rotate mode and just bring that up here. Now let's see how that affects our dynamics. All right, so now we have our swinging sign, but you might've noticed a little bit of a problem. If we zoom in here, it looks like the ropes are slipping through the sign and not quite attaching correctly. But there's an easy way to fix this. All we need to do is grab our dynamics tag again and go back to the start of the simulation. We just need to go over here and cache the animation to disk. And you'll see if we hit bake all, that's going to bake every frame for us. And if we play that back, that problem has now been corrected. And we finished our swinging sign effect. So you can write whatever you want on your sign and feel free to tweak the dynamic settings to get a bit of a different look. But that brings us to the end of this tutorial and to the end of CG Shortcuts for 2021. We're taking a bit of time off for Christmas, but we'll be back in the new year. So happy holidays, everyone. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could keep making all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you in 2022. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.